Hey everybody, it's Daniel Newman here at CES 2023 West Hall Luminar booth with my bestie Patrick Moorhead for the 6.5 short. Something new and different that we're doing here at this year's 6.5. We got a little downtime, we got a chance to rap about all things going on at this event and it's a pretty big one. Yeah, it's great to be here, Daniel. And nothing beats being on the show floor to get that level of excitement other than maybe standing in lines and stuff like that. But that's the uh, that's the hard part. But here we are. I mean, so we're in West Hall right now where they have a lot of the uh, autom automotion, automotive, basically all vehicles that have either been electrified or they have AI or autonomy. I mean, there's the biggest John Deere tractor I've ever seen in my entire life. And we're sitting across the biggest dump truck from Caterpillar I've literally ever seen in my life. Yeah, you know, and I, that is like my dream toy. Uh, I don't know if we can get a photo in, in there and a B-roll, but that, that was like when you grew up and you were playing with a toy at the park, that was the toy. Yeah. Um, and that's it in real life. Um, so maybe we start off, <laughs> maybe we can go by, by topic or something like that, but what are you seeing in transportation? Yeah, let's start in transportation. I mean, I think you and I can agree it's about the electrification and the autonomy of everything. And then the other thing I would layer into it is it's, you're seeing a lot more technological in the cock, technology dropped into the cockpit. Yeah. I mean, big booths here from Amazon, big booths from Microsoft, Google in the vehicles. We just had an interview with Polestar talking about that. And then of course you saw big announcements from NVIDIA. Uh, we've been talking all year with the Qualcomm. We'll have Nicole Degal on our show later this week. So th there's a lot going on, but I'd say it's those kind of three things. It's in the cockpit, it's autonomy, and then of course electrification. Yeah, it was cool. I mean, so I, I thought one of the bigger automotive announcements was that Luminar is getting into the mapping data business, right? And I, it's so funny, people should be surprised, but they really shouldn't be. Because you're going to have a million cars out there in short order Every mile, LiDAR is 3D mapping the entire environment. So I think they said that their goal was to have the, the freshest, uh, broadest uh, array of 3D maps. And by the way, they could turn around and sell to every other automaker. Yeah, I love that. The whole acquisition of Civil Maps, which uh, Austin Russell, CEO, talked about kind of stealthily. Yeah. Um, and now it's out. And the idea of sort of building this global neural network for autonomy and safety, right? Because yeah. that's a trend too. I didn't really say it specifically, but why autonomy, why LiDAR, right. safety. Yeah. That's at least what it should be about. Well, if people are just doing what they're doing every day, the way we did with our phones, right? Using an app, making it yeah. smarter, making it better, creating an experience. Well, right now, you know, in the vehicles, there's an opportunity every mile that we drive, whether it's in this SAIC you're seeing right behind us and the yeah. Volvo car right there, the Polestar, the idea is that it can drive and it can be collecting that 3D data, sure. creating safer, as we move to L3 and L4 and L5, right. safer and better data that LiDAR's putting off as opposed to the cameras and vision uh, that most cars are depending on today. Yeah, it's cool to see how the combination of these really high-end sensor and sensor systems like we have at Luminar uh, are connected with the big platforms like uh, Qualcomm's, the NVIDIA's, and I think even in some cases, uh, Mobileye as well. And what's really cool, you had mentioned that we are going to talk to Nicole uh, down the road, but uh, we're going to see and talk about the next generation Flex SOC that they're bringing out. Because, you know, when I look at Qualcomm and, and kind of what they need to show the public now, right? Telematics, check. Dashboard, check. And the autonomy is coming up and they showed L2 Plus, but hey, how do we extend from L2 to L5? And that's the Flex SOC that I'm looking forward to hearing uh, more about. Yeah, it's, the car stuff has been great. So just as a kind of a quick move on, Pat, I know you spent a lot of time, I have too, with some of the device makers. Yeah. You want to talk about that for a minute? Yeah, so first of all, um, listen, it's funny, everybody wants to pretend that the PC's dead every year. And then here it was, it was basically the savior uh, of everything during uh, the pandemic, right? We used it in our homes to have more entertainment. We worked from home on these. And yeah, I get that the market's kind of bottoming out right now for, for a lot of different reasons, but we're still looking at 250 million units uh, likely for, for 2023. So what we saw here was bigger, better, faster, and cooler, right? And one of the cool things that one of the biggest reveals was 
AMD's rise in AI, right? People are like, hey, what are you doing in AI uh, on it? Some other vendors, I think, got a jump on that, that, that position and owning that market. But the reality is we are in the very beginning of AI. And what did they drop? IP based on their acquisition of Xilinx in Ryzen processors this year. So that's essentially this AI everywhere uh, theme that we're seeing. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, I had the chance, I spent some time in AMD's uh, Experience Center, very impressive. Their whole hardware approach to, to AI in the device. You know, some are doing it with software, AMD's right. doing some very impressive things with hardware. Now we're starting to see the Xilinx acquisition come to life. Um, great mo momentum for the company. Also right. spent a little time over with Lenovo. Um, I got to say that whole flex, you know, I got a little excited. I, I think I tweeted out the, the not the coolest thing period I've seen here, because yeah. I've seen cooler things. I said it was the coolest device that right. I would actually probably use. Now, I don't have one yet, but a 16 inch foldable, and this thing with the magnetism is super clever, right? You got the magnetic keyboard. Right. And you can fold this thing up, it turns into like an 11 inch yeah. with a keyboard, or you take it off. It seems like a long haul airline tool of the year for like yeah. streaming videos and stuff, but really like that. So those kinds of form factors, kind of seeing the foldable, stretchable, um, next generation of PCs, like you said, they're not dead. They're just yeah. not dead. There's cool things, there's innovation still happening and we're seeing it here at CES. Yeah, one of the biggest uh, things, uh, one of the low level things that most people don't quite think about, but it's very basic that the cooler I can make the chip, the higher performance it's going to be, or if you want same level of performance, remove the, have fanless. Well, uh, I went to Ferrari Systems booth and they essentially showed how you could have a fanless system or put a second, uh, a 10 watt higher level processor in the same form factor at the same sound. And that is like Nirvana. And they use this cool tech called MEMS technology to make this happen. So it's essentially a semiconductor that's creating a fan and blowing it out. So kind of nerdy, kind of geeky, but that will be transformative in 24. Yeah, so my trend of the event as we sort of close down our little short here is bit, it's kind of been the embedding of AI in everything. Now, I've kind of made this prediction like the last eight years about AI and everything, and I think we're seeing AI become more pervasive. Society as a whole, I think, now understands how AI is playing, playing a role. Sometimes it's advanced analytics, sometimes it's machine learning, sometimes it's really AI. But in like an area where I'm really excited, because we talked a lot about automotive, but it's, it's healthcare. Now you're actually a guy because you tell me all the time about how you slept, right? right. You wear the, the I think you wear the aura. Yeah. Uh, you've also got some data coming off your uh, your watch. watch. Yeah. But seeing now more and more healthcare for for basically the treatment and managing of, of a lot of uh, you know disease and issues like diabetes, things that have every day in their life, the ability to have a simple wearable IoT, but not just anymore just giving you the current data, but being able to give you predictive data, seeing the technology really start to impact our lives give us that kind of proactive care. Yeah. Instead of having to go to your, like this, and, and I know they don't replace doctors, I want to be very clear about that. But the ability to have technology kind of telling us, hey, you need to walk more, you need to sleep more, or right. even if you have some sort of disease, you need to be treating, taking care of, here's the next step to make sure you're, you're staying in balance. I mean, no one likes going to the doctor. But I think healthcare, wearables, and AI are really coming together to create something meaningful. Yeah, so I want to put another log on the fire, and that is essentially NVIDIA bringing generative AI to Omniverse. Yeah. And for those who might not, uh, Omniverse essentially is a creator, collaborator platform, and generative, generative AI is the next generation, huge models where essentially you could text, you could type in, hey, I want a mountain with a stream running in the background. Uh, but what they did is they pulled generative AI into uh, the Omniverse tool set. And so what that means is uh, essentially a lot more creativity with a lot less time and a lot less effort. You want a cool background, put it in there. You want to take a 2D photo or a 2D video and turn it into 3D, uh, you can do that inside of Omniverse. So another way that AI is transforming, and, and in this case for the creator. Yeah, absolutely, and, and listen, I know we got to go, but the Omniverse is probably the 
the, the, the NVIDIA Omniverse is one of the few lasting artifacts of that sort of hype that we saw over last year. Yeah. The Omniverse, the, 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 the autonomous simulative Four, environment to be able to build meaningful second. things, building vehicles, building and engineering towers, building, you know, um, uh, organs that can yeah. be put into our bodies and you like this is the stuff that they should be talking about right. not floating in Ma Mark Zuckerberg's uh, social media platforms and meetings right it's what Nvidia is doing so that's a really impressive one yeah it's good so uh, take us out are absolutely we, let's, are we let's there? call it a day yeah so this so, is it are you want to you do it well you did the oh, intro man. I'll do the outro yeah, so hey this is uh, the 65 on the road doing a short here inside of the West Hall at CES 2023 in Las Vegas with my bestie here, Dan Newman. Check out all the videos that we're doing here for CES 2023. We hope you like them. If you like what you heard, hit that subscribe button. If not, tell Dan about it. Watch anyways. anyways take care, have a good one. Bye-bye.